Okay, now let's start with Caro 2020. I again tell you, as per section 143, subsection 11, central government has a power to order additional reporting. The auditor has to report on additional matters. If CG has ordered, they have a power under section 143.11. So based on power under section 143.11, CG has came out with one order. Based on power under section 143.11, CG has came out with one order, Companies Auditor Report Order, CARO. Earlier it was 2016, now it's 2020. So they came out with CARO 2020. There are 21 clauses which are to be additionally reported if CARO is applicable. Yes, CARO 2020, there are 21 clauses. So if CARO is applicable, auditor has to additionally report on this 21 items. Now, sir, this CARO 2020 came when? Now, practically, it is applicable... for financial year commencing from 1421 it's applicable for financial year commencing from 1421 so in simple words it is applicable for the year 2122 it's applicable for the year 2122 to march 22's balance sheet march 22, 31st March 22's balance sheet, whenever we are reporting, and if CARO is applicable, we are required to report on additional 21 matters. Now, sir, what was before March 22's balance sheet? Say March 21 balance sheet. Now, March 21 balance sheet, CARO 16 is applicable. In CARO 2016, there were 16 clauses which are to be additionally reported if CARO is applicable. Okay, so practically, we don't have any audit report where CARO 2020 is there. Yeah, because it will be for the balance sheet as at 31st March 22. IINAR, we are in 21. The balance sheet as at 31st March 22, auditor will report on additional matters as per CARO 2020. As of today, CARO 2016 practically will be there. Okay, now, for your May 21 exams, CARO 2020 is not applicable. Yeah, May 21 exams, CARO 2020 not applicable. It will be applicable from November 21 exams. So, as per the power given under section 143.11, CGS came out with one order requiring additional reporting to be done by a chartered accountant. And that order is called Companies Auditor Report Order. CARO 2020. Okay, let's move it. Very important. I'm telling you, CARO is very important theoretically. Exam point of view, one or two question definitely comes out of it. The next 16 pages, definitely one or two question will come. And practically also, very, very important. Okay, that's divided in four para. The CARO is divided in four paragraph. Para 1, short title, application, Commencement. So what is the heading? Companies Auditor Report Order 2020. It's a short title. Uh, short nahi hai, lambai, but still short title. It's applicable to whom? It's applicable to whom? And commencement. From which date it will be applicable? Para 2 is auditor's report to contain matters specified in para 3 and 4. So if CARO is applicable, para 2 says... If CARO is applicable, Para 2 says you are required to report on the matters given in Para 3 and 4. Para 3 contains the 21 clauses. The 21 items we have to mandatorily report if CARO is applicable. And Para 4 says if answer to any of the thing is negative, like when we are reporting on 21 clauses, if answer to anything is negative, we are required to give reasons. So Para 1 talks about short title, it's applicable to whom and from which date. Para 2 says if CARO is applicable, 
report on the matters given in para 3 and 4 para 3 contains that 21 clauses matters which are to be included and para 4 says if answer to any of the thing is negative you have to give reasons and caro is additional reporting requirement caro is additional reporting requirement we report on balance sheet pnl whether it shows a true and fair view that remains we report on 143 subsection 1 six matters 143 subsection 1 six matters we have to inquire mandatorily report only if there are adverse comment that will remain we have 143 3 10 matters mandatory reporting 143 3 10 matters mandatory reporting that all will remain this is additional reporting if caro is applicable okay let's start para one market is important it's actually written para one the title is companies auditor report order 2020 it's applicable to every company including a foreign company it's applicable to every company including foreign company which is registered in India to them also it's applicable except except it's not applicable to whom banking company insurance company section 8 company OPC small company okay they not apply to banking insurance section 8 OPC small company and private limited company which is not a subsidiary or a holding of public company private limited company which is not a subsidiary or holding company of a public company and which fulfills all the following condition okay the private company fulfilling all the following condition private company fulfilling all following condition is exempted from caro the caro applies to all company except this so private limited company fulfilling all following condition caro exempted any condition not fulfilled caro becomes applicable okay so any condition not fulfilled caro becomes applicable private limited company fulfilling all the following condition is exempted paid up capital and reserves and surplus the paid up capital and reserves and surplus does not exceed 1 crore on the balance sheet date that is last day of the year paid up capital and reserves and surplus does not exceed 1 crore as at the last day of the year total borrowings from banks and financial institution okay total borrowings from any banks and financial institution only banks and financial institution not individual you have taken a loan from individual mr. a no 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 that don't count only bank or financial institution the total borrowing from bank or financial institution does not exceed 1 crore now at any point of time during the financial year at any point of time during the financial year okay the paid up capital and reserve surplus we have to see of last date borrowings from any bank or financial institution does not exceed one crore at any time during the financial year and total revenue as per schedule 3 now total revenue is revenue from operation plus other income total revenue it is revenue from operations plus other income the total revenue as per schedule 3 does not exceed 10 crore during the financial year and one thing all limits are of current year limits are of current year okay so all three conditions satisfied paid up capital and reserve surplus does not exceed 1 crore at the end of financial year total borrowings from banks and financial institution does not exceed 1 crore at any time during the financial year and total revenue as disclosed under schedule 3 does not exceed 10 crore 
during the financial year the private limited company fulfilling all three condition for them caro is not applicable if any condition violated caro becomes applicable and if caro is applicable company doesn't have to do anything if caro is applicable company doesn't have to do anything auditor has to report on matters given under para 3 and 4 the auditor's report will contain additional reporting on the 21 clauses which are given clear with this okay now i just have a few notes over here like number 1 your reserves and surplus will include all reserves and surplus okay the capital reserve revaluation reserve securities premium anything it will include all reserves and surplus it will include all reserves and surplus so what if pnl debit balance is there pnl debit balance if it is there it will appear as negative under reserves and surplus only the pnl debit balance yes it will be deducted in full okay the pnl debit balance is shown as negative under reserves and surplus so while calculating paid up capital plus reserves and surplus it will be deducted to pnl debit balance you deducted net i have to take the reserves and surplus in full now earlier earlier in caro 16 the pnl debit balance was deducted to the extent of revenue reserves available so earlier pnl debit balance was deducted to the extent of revenue reserves available now it will be deducted in full you want paid up capital plus reserves and surplus pnl debit balance hai to wo reserve surplus negative hai take them as negative only so while calculating paid up capital plus reserves and surplus it will be deducted in full okay number 2 we have to take borrowings from banks and financial institution borrowings from any individual or borrowings from other than banks and financial institution say individual say individual or from any firm or from any company will not be considered the borrowings from other than banks and financial institutions say from a individual or a firm or a company from an individual or a firm or a company they are not considered i can have a borrowing from individual or a firm or a company say for example of more than 1 crore also but while calculating whether caro is applicable or not see the limits of borrowing from banks and financial institution and that to any time during the financial year and now this all is private limited company ke liye for public company caro mandatory applies for public company caro mandatory applies only for private limited company if they fulfill all the following condition caro is exempted only for private company if they fulfill all following condition caro is exempted okay next total revenue okay total 
revenue includes revenue from sales revenue from operation plus other income revenue from operation plus other income under revenue from operations under revenue from operations sales should be net of gst sales should be net of gst sales should be net of trade discount sales should be net of gst sales should be net of trade discount under indies it should be net of cash discount as well so under indies the cash discount is deducted from top line only uh, as me cash discount is an expenditure comes in pnl discount allowed so under as accounting standard the cash discount is an expenditure under indies the cash discount is deducted from sales only the sale should be net of gst it should be net of trade discount in days may it should be net of cash discount as well and sales should be net of sales return sales should be net of sales return sales return pertains to goods sold in which year is of no use okay pay attention goods were sold in last year return comes in this year goods were sold in last year return comes in this year if return comes in this year we deduct from this year sale i repeat if a return comes in this year we deduct from this year sale it relates to goods sold of last year is of no use the so sales return pertain to goods sold in which year i just forgot the word sold is of no use so whether they were sold in last year or whether they were sold in this year doesn't matter whether they were sold in last year or this year doesn't matter return came in this year i repeat return came in this year deduct from this year sales while calculating revenue from operations while calculating revenue from operations sales should be net of gst sales should be net of trade discount for indies it should be net of cash discount as well it should be net of sales return sales return relates to goods sold in which year that's of no use if return came in this year it's deducted from this year's sale okay this is para 1 this is para 1 and it's applicable from financial year commencing 1 421 earlier it was 1420 now it's applicable from 1421 okay so they have postponed the applicability earlier it was applicable from 1420 onwards now they have postponed to 1421 onwards okay that's so applicable to all companies including foreign company except banking company insurance company electricity company section 8 company 
ओके बैंकिंग इंश्योरेंस नॉट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ओके नॉट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बैंकिंग इंश्योरेंस सेक्शन एट कंपनी वन पर्सन कंपनी स्मॉल कंपनी प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी विच फुलफिल्स ऑल द फॉलोइंग कंडीशन बट हाँ द प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी शुड नॉट बी अ सब्सिडरी और अ होल्डिंग ऑफ अ पब्लिक कंपनी इफ इट्स अ सब्सिडरी और अ होल्डिंग ऑफ अ पब्लिक कंपनी देन कारो इज मैंडेटरी एप्लीकेबल तो ऑल पब्लिक कंपनीज कारो इज मैंडेटरीली एप्लीकेबल सर इफ कारो एप्लीकेबल वॉट शुड कंपनी डू Nothing. Who has to do? Auditor. Yes, if Caro is applicable, auditor has to report on additional twenty-one matters in his audit report. Okay, let's move ahead. Illustration one. C. A. Vishram is appointed as a branch auditor of V. V. K. Limited. Okay, you are appointed as. Branch auditor of VVK Limited. Okay, do I need to report on Caro matters? I'm just a branch auditor, not a main auditor. I'm just a branch auditor. I'm not a main auditor. Is Caro applicable only for audit report issued by principal auditor? Is Caro applicable only for audit report of principal auditor? Now see. Pay attention. principal auditor has audited ho principal auditor has audited ho if that company caro is applicable a principal auditor has to report on 21 matters but he knows only about ho what about things at branches so whenever he is reporting he is not reporting on ho principal auditor is not reporting only on ho he has audited only ho but he is reporting on entire company as is reporting on entire company he should know how the 21 matters were at branches he should know the main auditor reports on overall company he has audited only the ho so he should know how this 21 matters were at branches so whether caro applies to branch audits answer is yes so caro is applicable for branch audit as well if it is applicable to Entire company. So, if it's applicable to entire company, if it's applicable to the company, it applies for branch audit as well. The branch auditor will report on twenty-one matters. How we found out that twenty-one matters in branch? The branch me or twenty-one matters? How say? He will report. and that report goes to principal auditor principal auditor will report on 21 matters for entire company if it is applicable to the entire company so whether caro applies to branch audit yes abc private limited ABC Private Limited is a holding company of XYZ Limited. Okay, this is Private Limited. You are a holding company of a XYZ Limited. This is a public company. Okay, the so private company which is a subsidiary or a holding of a public company to them, Caro is applicable. So whether Caro is applicable, answer is yes. Yes, Caro is applicable. Why applicable? Private limited company, which is a holding company of public company, will be regarded as public company. Okay, so private limited company, which is not a holding or a subsidiary of public company, and which fulfills all the following condition, they are exempted. private company fulfilling certain condition and which is not a subsidiary 
or a holding of a public company, they are exempted. Okay, next. BK Limited, a benefit fund registered under NBFC. Okay, the BK Limited is NBFC for past two years. It's an NBFC for past two decades, not years. 31st December 11. 31st December 11. Company got converted into bank. Okay, 31st December, make it 21. 11 ki jaga, make it 21. Thirty first December twenty one, it got converted into bank. Okay, so now during the year you were NBFC, middle of the year, you got converted into bank, last day of the year you are a bank. Now Caro is not applicable to banking company. Caro is not applicable to banking company, it applies to NBFCs. Caro applies to NBFCs. Banking companies are exempted. So part of the year you are NBFC. Then you got a banking license. Part of the year you are NBFC. You got a banking license. You got converted into bank. Last day of the year you are a bank. Whether Caro is applicable. Part of the year NBFC. Part of the year bank. Whether Caro is applicable. Answer is no. Caro is not applicable as BK Limited is a banking company. as at the reporting date it's a banking company as at the balance sheet date that is 31st March 22 it's a bank okay Caro exempts banking company sir part year NBFC no last day ko bank the it will not apply no sir don't have to see any time during the year don't have to see any time during the year see any time during the year was only for this loans from banks and financial institution does not exceed one crore at any time any time is only for that any time is only for this point any time is only for this point and it's only for whether to private companies it will apply or not. Uh, if you are a bank as on the last date, to you it does not apply. If you are a bank on last date, to you it does not apply. Banking companies are exempted. NBFCs are not exempted from Caro. Okay, let's just write over here. NBFCs are not exempted. Only banking companies are exempted. Non-banking finance companies are not exempted. Still we are in para 1. Next, question number 4. CA Bhava is an auditor of BB Private Unlimited. Okay, it's you are auditor of BB Private Unlimited. Okay. You have turnover 3 crores or oh, less than 10. Turnover does not exceed 10 crores. Loans from bank and financial institution 23 lakh does not exceed 1 crore. Paid up capital. Paid up capital and reserves is 48 lakh does not exceed 1 crore. All the conditions are satisfied. Your turnover doesn't exceed, loan from bank and financial institution doesn't exceed, paid up capital reserve doesn't exceed, whether Caro is applicable. Now, if you go and see the word private limited company, 
fulfilling all the following condition is exempt. This is private, unlimited company. So whether Caro is applicable, so I write down over here, Caro is applicable. Caro is applicable. Now, sir, why Caro is applicable? I write down over here. Para 1 exempts private limited companies fulfilling all the conditions given. Private limited company, BB private unlimited is there. Here it is BB private unlimited. It's not private limited, it's private unlimited. Okay, next question. See, whenever such question comes, explain the applicability para. Don't write only the conclusions. Conclusions never carry marks. Conclusion is only for one mark. Three to four marks are always for writing the provision. So write down the provision properly, then go to conclusion. So first explain provision, second para. Correlate question with the provision. And third para is conclusion. Next, paid up capital 60 lakh, revaluation reserve 20, capital reserve 22, PNL debit balance 4. Okay, so paid up capital plus reserve is equal to 60 plus 20 plus 22 minus 4. PNL debit balance should be fully deducted. 60 plus 20 plus 22 minus 4, it comes 98. Therefore, Caro is not applicable. Uh, we are assuming it's for private companies. Not applicable. If private limited company also satisfies other condition. Also satisfies other condition. Other conditions are satisfied. Caro is not applicable. Next, company has borrowed 160 lakh on 5th June, repaid entire loan before year end. Okay, you repaid entire loan before year end. Whether Caro is applicable? Answer is yes. Caro is applicable. Loans and borrowings from, I assume it's from bank. Banks and financial institutions are to be seen at any time during the financial year. So to see at any time during the financial year. So 5th June, we had borrowed 160 lakh at any point of time during the year. Did it exceed 1 crore? Yes. At any point of time, did it exceed 1 crore? Yes. Next. T Private Limited. T Private Limited has paid up capital and reserve less than 100 lakhs. Okay, paid up capital and reserve less than 100 lakhs. No loans from banks and financial institution. Now, total revenue as per schedule 3. Total revenue 
as per schedule 3 what is the total revenue as per schedule 3 sales is 12 crores I just write in lakhs 1200 lakhs before deducting trade discount so we deduct 20 is trade discount and sales return 190 190 is sales return 190 is sales return and company rendered a services plus services is 20 lakhs services is 20 lakhs this is equal to so 1200 was before deducting trade discounts and sales return you deduct it 1200 is before deducting trade discount and sales return sales should be net of trade discount sales should be net of sales return the minus 20 minus 190 so this is sales coming 990 services you are given 20 plus service is 20 this is coming as 1010 lakh 1010 lakhs greater than 10 crore this is greater than 10 crores okay so therefore caro is applicable therefore caro is applicable Caro is applicable. Paid up capital reserve less than 100 lakhs. No loans. The so first two criteria satisfied. Last one not satisfied. Private company is exempted from Caro if all the criteria are satisfied. Next. Asta Private Limited. Okay. Private Limited. It's a private limited. Paid up capital is 140 lakh. Oh, paid up capital exceeds 1 CR. So Caro is applicable, no need to read other things. Caro is applicable as paid up capital plus reserves and surplus exceed 1 crore. No need to read other things, it's fine. Ninth one, okay, the seventh one was good, important. seventh one was good important ninth okay for the purpose of assessing applicability of caro for the purpose of assessing applicability of caro which or what kind of loans need to be considered okay we consider loan from banks and financial institution the loan from bank and financial institution we consider it can be short term it can be long term it can be any form it can be term loan, demand loan, export credit, cash credit, overdraft, anything. And in the form of term loan, demand loan, export credit, ESR, anything it can be. Okay, so loan from bank or financial institution, I need to cover. Short term, long term, everything has to be covered. And outstanding balance at any point of time should not exceed... 1 crore. Now question, sir, bank has given a guarantee on my behalf. Bank has given a guarantee on my behalf to someone. Should I include in loans and borrowings from bank? Bank has given guarantee on your behalf. Usko bolte non-fund based facility. Usko kya bolte Non-fund based facility. They're not funded you. They're not given you money. They have given a guarantee for you. Or bank has given a letter of credit. Bank has given a letter of credit, LC. That's also a type of guarantee on behalf of you. So whether that non-fund-based facilities are to be included. Okay, the non-fund-based facility guarantees given by bank on our behalf. On our behalf, they have given guarantee. 
non fund based facility if there's a non fund based facility should i include in borrowings only to the extent it has devolved and converted into fund based credit facility okay only to the extent it has devolved and converted into fund based facility sir ye kya hai ye kya hai okay they gave a guarantee on your behalf you defaulted if you defaulted they would have paid the money so now earlier it was a guarantee now they have paid the money on your behalf they have to take it from you the so non fund based facilities normally are not included non fund based facilities are not included in borrowing but if such facility have devolved and have been converted into fund based facility so you bank gave a guarantee on your behalf you defaulted so now bank paid the money you defaulted bank had given a guarantee they paid so now they have to collect from you so now that non fund based is converted into fund based so when we defaulted bank has paid on our behalf now we need to pay to bank so it has devolved and has been converted into fund based credit facility okay this is para 1 so this was your para 1 it is applicable to all companies including foreign companies except banking company insurance company section 8 company small company opc private limited company fulfilling all the following condition uh, public companies caro will be mandatory public companies caro will be mandatory only private limited companies fulfilling all following condition one paid up capital and reserves does not exceed 1 crore at the end of the financial year borrowings from banks and financial institution does not exceed 1 crore at any time during the financial year and total revenue as per schedule 3 does not exceed 10 crore during the financial year now para 2 says para 2 says if caro is applicable auditors report should contain matters which are specified in para 3 and 4 so we need to report on the matters given in para 3 and 4 now question imagine the company which we audit they also have a subsidiary okay company which we are auditing they have a subsidiary so now we will report on parents stand alone and we'll also report on parents cfs So we'll be reporting on parents' standalone financial statement, and we'll also be reporting on consolidated financial statement. So we'll give two reports: standalone ka, consolidated ka. Whether I should report on caro matters in standalone audit report and consolidated ka audit report both. So caro twenty one matters are to be reported in. standalone ka audit report i'm reporting on standalone financial statement and i'm reporting on consolidated financial statement whether i need to include 21 matters in both the report they say no so caro shall not apply to audit report on consolidated financial statement except clause 21 okay so when i am reporting on consolidated financial statement a stand alone of parent caro is there stand alone of subsidiary caro is there but when i am reporting on consolidated financial the stand alone of parent yes caro reporting is there stand alone of subsidiary caro report is there but when i am reporting on cfs i don't have to report on caro matters except clause 21 i hope you are clear and clause 21 just says are there any negative comments in any stand alone reports of parent or subsidiaries are there any negative comment agar wo negative comment hai that you put it in cfs to so, caro does not apply the reporting on this 21 matters does not apply when i am reporting on consolidated financial statement but uh, exception clause 21 will apply Okay, now comes para three, the most important, the full full para three important. 
full para three important one or two question out of caro is mandatory so imagine 16 pages gives you 5 to 10 marks it's a good deal here 16 pages giving me 10 marks to 100 marks clear 160 page ka hai we have 900 pages ye 16 pages giving you 5 to 10 marks is a good deal okay if caro is applicable if caro is applicable we are required to report on this 21 matters the matters given under para 3 and 4 so which are the matters which i have to report number one fixed asset and so do i need to report generally uh, fixed asset show a true and fair view can i report like that no no whatever points are given did as it is they are reported uh, so you don't have to just remember headings oh fixed asset number two inventory number three intercorporate loans investment guarantees no not just heading I have to remember inside also I have to remember inside also so I don't have to report generally fixed asset shows a true and fair view no I have to report this points as it is okay so under that A, in that A there are two points A and B, whether company is maintaining proper records, whether company is maintaining proper records showing full particulars including quantitative details and situation of PP, so whether company is maintaining proper records showing full particulars including quantitative detail, so kya proper record a fixed asset register is kept showing full particular including quantitative detail how many quantity okay air condition five units laptops three units so full particulars including quantitative detail and situation oh so air condition five one fitted in classroom one one fitted in classroom two one fitted in classroom three one fitted in classroom four situation of pp similarly whether company is maintaining proper record showing full particulars of intangible asset okay so whether company is maintaining proper records showing full particulars quantitative detail and situation of pp and whether they are maintaining proper records showing full particulars of intangible now intangible may you can't write situation yeah they are not tangible the word situation quantitative detail is not written under intangible because intangible is you can't see you can't touch you can't count that's why including quantitative detail and situation is missing including quantitative detail and situation is not written for intangible yahan pe word hai including quantitative detail and situation here it is not there Okay, second, uh, now just tell me, who has to physically verify the fixed assets at regular interval? Who has to physically verify fixed asset at regular interval? Sir, management. Correct. It's the management responsibility to ensure fixed assets are physically verified at reasonable interval. So, here we have to report. Here we have to report whether this PP... Uh, intangibles can't be physically verified intangibles can't be physically verified intangible assets can't be physically verified So whether the PP have been physically verified by management at a reasonable interval, whether the PP has been physically verified by management at reasonable interval, whether any dis material discrepancy is noticed on such verification, so whether they have been physically verified by management at a reasonable interval, whether any material discrepancies were noticed, and if so, whether they have been properly dealt with in the books of accounts so kya physical verification management ne kiya if so whether any material discrepancy was found out 
if yes whether it's properly dealt with in the books of accounts okay see okay you have to report as it is ditto line to line yeah, ditto line to line c point whether the title deeds of all the immobile property uh, if it's a leased old property there will be a lease deed uh, lease old property may there will be a lease deed so whether the title deeds of all immobile property which are disclosed in financials the financials may whichever are immobile property the title deeds are held in the name of company title deeds are held in the name of company if not provide the details thereof okay so whether the title deeds of immobile property which are disclosed in financials are held in the name of company if not provide the detail description of property uska gross carrying amount it's held in the name of it's held in the name of whom whether is a promoter director or the relative or the employee so whether he is a promoter director relative hai employee hai please indicate the range period since how much time it's held in their name since how much time held in their name since how much time held in their name and reason why why it's held in their name why not in company's name why it's held in their name why not in company's name that you are required to stay and if there is a dispute going on that also you mention okay this is c point so whether the title deeds of immovable property are held in the name of the company if not give the details okay d whether the company has revalued its pp or intangible or both during the year whether we have done a revaluation if so whether the revaluation is based on report of registered value if so whether the revaluation is based on valuation by registered valuer and specify the amount of change if change is 10% or more okay so this is one if so if so whether revaluation is based on valuation by registered valuer and you are also required to specify the amount of change if it is 10% or more okay so actually in this point there are three points whether the company has revalued pp or intangibles or both during year if so whether the revaluation is as per the valuations of registered valuer and also specify the amount of change if it is 10% or more and e point whether any proceeding have been initiated or are pending against the company any proceeding is initiated or are pending against the company for holding any benami property not in your name benami benami property under benami transaction prohibition act and if so whether the company has appropriately disclosed the details in financials if so whether the company has appropriately disclosed the details in financials it's benami property which you are not basically having in your books books mein nahi tha wo benami hai black money se purchase kiya hua yeah black money se your purchase not appearing in your financials that's benami property so if any proceedings are going on uska details are to be disclosed in financials ha ah, to proceedings ka details are to be disclosed in financials this is one inventory sorry fixed asset 21 clauses mandatory reported 21 clauses mandatory reported now what i'll try to remember sir itna sara kaise yaad rakhenge ho jayega don't worry so don't try to remember each and every line fully try to remember the key words like first wale mein tha proper records relating to pp proper records relating to intangibles सेकेंड वाले में था फिजिकल वेरिफिकेशन डन बाय मैनेजमेंट एट रीजनेबल इंटरवल थर्ड वाले में था टाइटल डीड्स वेदर दे आर इन द नेम ऑफ कंपनी और नॉट फोर्थ वाले में वेदर देर एनी रीवैल्यूएशन इज डन फॉर पीपी और इंटेंजिबल्स एंड लास्ट वाला वेदर एनी बेनामी प्रॉपर्टी पे प्रोसीडिंग्स आर गोइंग ऑन तो फाइव पॉइंट्स 
I try to first I basically remember the main crux. Now, when you read the sentences two three times, automatically, almost similar language will come. तो पहले तो मेन हेडिंग्स याद रखो फिक्स्ड एसेट के अंदर फाइव पॉइंट्स विच वर द फाइव पॉइंट्स प्रॉपर रिकॉर्ड्स फिजिकल वेरिफिकेशन डन बाय मैनेजमेंट एट रीजनेबल इंटरवल टाइटल डीड्स आर हेल्ड इन द नेम ऑफ कंपनी रिवैल्यूएशन एंड फिफ्थ वन वाज प्रोसीडिंग्स रिलेटेड टू बेनामी प्रॉपर्टी तो दैट मीन अब व्हेन यू रीड दिस थिंग टू थ्री टाइम्स ऑटोमेटिकली सिमिलर लैंग्वेज विल कम ओके द फर्स्ट वेदर कंपनी इज मेंटेनिंग proper records showing full particular including quantitative details and situation of pp whether company is maintaining proper records showing full particulars of intangible yahan pe words including quantitative details situation is not there because intangible hai uska koi situation nahi hota second whether pp has been physically verified intangibles cannot be physically verified so whether pp has been physically verified by management at a reasonable interval whether any material discrepancies has been identified if so whether they have been properly dealt with in financial statement third one whether the title deeds of all the immovable property uh, all the immovable property uh, if lease property hai to lease deed hoga the title deeds ya lease deed of all the immovable property disclosed in financial statement are held in the name of company if not give the details fourth whether the company has revalued its pp or intangible or both during the year if so whether the revaluation is as per the valuation by registered valuer and also specify the amount of change if it is 10% or more whether any proceeding is going on against the company or it's pending against the company for any benami property if yes uska detail should be disclosed in financials okay this was fixed asset ditto similar way you are required to report yahan pe jaise fi clause the in caro 16 in caro 16 there were only three clauses okay let me just go to one of the audit report I'm just taking one audit report for your reference. Infosys 1819. I'm taking Infosys 1819. This is the standalone financial statement. Just pay attention. I know it's not visible I'll be reading out don't worry Okay I just have over here Okay pay attention As required by company's auditor report order 2016 issued by central government in terms of section 14311 we given annex sub b a statement on the matters given in para 3 and 4 of the order if caro is applicable we have to report on the matters given in para 3 and 4 of the order this audit report deloitte is basically the partner or the auditor deloitte haskins and sales llp now if i just go to annex sub b they say we have given in annex sub b okay this is annex sub b to audit report I know it's not visible just pay attention I'll be speaking out Okay earlier there were 16 matters now there are 21 matters Now first one was fixed asset First one was fixed asset now also fixed asset earlier there were 3 points now there are 5 points The first was whether company has maintained proper record showing full particular including quantitative detail and situation of fixed asset the question tha whether company has maintained we have to answer we have to answer the company has maintained question tha whether the company has maintained so we are answering the company has maintained proper record showing full particular including quantitative detail and situation of fixed asset now this point they bifurcated pp is separate intangible separate pp may quantitative detail situation is written intangible may quantitative detail situation is not written now goodwill may kya quantity 
गुडविल में क्या क्वांटिटी है टीवी फ्रिज फर्नीचर एसी उसमें क्वांटिटी होता है मशीन बसेस कार्स तो उसमें क्वांटिटी इंटेंजिबल में क्वांटिटी कैन नॉट बी देयर सिचुएशन कैन नॉट बी देयर दैट्स व्हाई दे रिमूव दैट ओके सेकंड तो वेदर द कंपनी वेदर द फिजिकल वेरिफिकेशन ऑफ पीपी इज डन बाय मैनेजमेंट एट रीजनेबल इंटरवल नाउ वर्ड दे यूज्ड इज पीपी अर्लियर दे वर यूजिंग फिक्स्ड एसेट the company has a program of verification to cover all fixed asset in a phased manner which in our opinion is reasonable having regard to the size and nature of asset so we have to report now whether physical verification is done by management at reasonable interval so they do in a phased manner which according to us is reasonable so pursuant to program certain fixed assets were verified by management during the year and according to the information given no material discrepancies were noticed so one we have to inform or report whether any material discrepancies were noticed if yes whether they are appropriately dealt with in financials so according to information explanation given to us no material discrepancies were noticed and third was title deeds Uh, third was title deeds are held in the name of company or not so they were written see we have to report now according to information explanation given to us the records examined by us and based on examination of conveyance deed sales deed etc we report that the title deeds the title deeds comprising immovable property of land building which are freehold are held in the name of company as at the balance sheet date okay in respect of immovable property which are taken on lease the lease agreements are in the name of company see did to that points only a uh, revaluation point was not there benami property wala point was not there under caro 16 caro 2020 me 5 points but we are not required to write general we have to write did to as it is okay let's go this was just to show you this infosys ka audit report this infosys audit report 19 18 19 ka hai that i have taken 19 20 also is caro 2016 20 21 also is caro 2016 21 22 se 21 22 se it will be caro 2020 going to the next item second inventory inventory now we are required to report whether physical verification of inventory has been conducted by management at reasonable interval and whether in our opinion the coverage and procedure of verification by management is appropriate the physical verification is conducted at reasonable interval by the management upar b by the management so whether they have done physical verification at a reasonable interval and in our opinion we have to give opinion whether the coverage and procedure is appropriate and whether in the opinion of auditor coverage and procedure is adequate whether any discrepancy of 10% or more whether any discrepancy of 10% of more were noticed if so whether they are properly dealt with in books of accounts so when management counted if there is a discrepancy of 10% or more whether it was there and if yes whether it's properly dealt with in financial statement b point whether during any point of time company has been sanctioned working capital limits okay working capital limit is generally against the security of stock and debtors working capital limit is generally against the security of stock and debtors and you are required to give stock figures to bank so if you have taken a working capital limit you have to give stock figures to bank so whether during any point of time company has been sanctioned a working capital limit in excess of 5 crore in aggregate from banks or financial institution on the security of current asset if you have taken working capital limit 
in excess of 5 crore from bank or financial institution on security of current asset whether the quarterly returns or statements filed by the company with such bank or financials are in agreement with books of accounts the stock figure which is there in books and stock figure which is given to them are they matching or not that we are required to basically report if not give details thereof so now see i know point number 2 is inventory i'll try to remember first is physical verification done by management reasonable interval and second is basically if working capital limits is taken to quarterly statements furnished to banks and financial institution uska figure and financials ka figure are matching or not i'll first try to remember important points fir jaunga detail mein then when you read two three times automatically language will come so whether physical verification has been done by management at reasonable interval and in our opinion whether the procedure and the coverage by management is appropriate or not and if any discrepancy of 10% or more is noticed whether it's properly dealt with in financial statement whether the company has taken at any point of time a working capital limit in exceeding rupees 5 crore and from bank or financial institution on security of current asset whether the quarterly statements furnished to them the figures in that and figures in books whether they are matching or not yaad rakhna padega there is no solution to it you need to remember it very important theoretically and practically third one inter corporate loans investment guarantee security inter corporate loans investment guarantee security one company giving loan to other one company investing in other company one company giving guarantee for other company one company giving their asset as security my asset i give it as security for your loan my asset i give it as security for your loan so whether during the year company has made made investment or provided guarantee security or granted loan okay so it's actually loan given investment made guarantee given i have given a loan so whether we have made investment provided guarantee security or granted loan to whether secured unsecured to companies firm lim llps or any other parties so whether we have whether the company has made investment provided guarantee or security or granted any loans or advances if yes so i have to report what whether during the year company has provided loans or provided advances in nature of loans or stood guarantee or provided security if yes so i have to indicate what aggregate amount during the year and the balance outstanding at year end with respect of such loans advances guarantees to subsidiary joint venture associate okay so if i have granted such loans or given guarantee security to so aggregate amount during the year like i gave i took it back again i gave i took it back the aggregate amount given and the closing balance the aggregate amount given and the closing balance of that loan security guarantee to subsidiaries associates joint venture this is to subsidiary associate joint venture this is other than subsidiary associate joint venture this is to subsidiary associate joint venture this other than subsidiary associate joint venture same thing you disclose how much is aggregate amount and closing balance to the subsidiary associate joint venture how much is aggregate amount closing balance to other than subsidiary associate joint venture b whether the investment made guarantee is given security is given and the terms and condition of grant of all the loans and the guarantees provided are not prejudicial to the interest of company 
तो वॉट एवर इन्वेस्टमेंट वी आर मेड और गारंटी इज गिवन और टर्म्स एंड कंडीशन ऑफ लोन एंड गारंटी दे आर नॉट प्रिजुडिशियल टू द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ कंपनी यार आई टेक अ लोन एट टेन परसेंट आई शुड नॉट गिव लोन एट एट परसेंट आई एम टेकिंग माई सेल्फ एट टेन शुड आई गिव एट एट इफ आई गिव एट एट इट्स प्रिजुडिशियल टू द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ कंपनी थर्ड सी इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ लोन एंड एडवांसेस विच आर इन नेचर ऑफ लोन whether a schedule of repayment of principal and payment of interest has been specified okay so if it's in nature of loan a repayment schedule is there and whether the repayments of repayment or receipts are regular so how they will pay me interest how they will pay my principal is the repayment schedule there repayment ka schedule is there and whether the repayments are regular or not If amount is overdue, if amount is overdue, state the total amount overdue for more than ninety days. So if amount is overdue, then what is the amount overdue for more than ninety days? I need to state and whether the steps taken by company for recovering the amount are reasonable. So whether reasonable steps have been taken by company for recovering the amount. So if amount is overdue, what is the amount overdue for more than ninety days? We'll report that amount. and whether company has taken reasonable step all well, right according to us company has taken reasonable step for recovery like company is constantly calling them they send a notice through lawyer so we say they are taking reasonable steps e whether any loan or advance which is in nature of loan which has fallen due during the year okay loan given it has fallen due during the year and has been renewed extended or a fresh loan is granted to settle the overdues of existing loan so there was a loan given it is basically due during the year whether i renewed it extended it or i gave a fresh loan so that they are able to repay that existing overdue if yes specify the aggregate amount of such dues renewed extended or settled by fresh loan so its aggregate amount is to be given okay f whether the company has granted loans or advances which are either repayable on demand or without specifying any terms or period of repayment okay then any loans are given which are repayable on demand or no terms of repayment are decided no period no terms have been decided if so what is the aggregate amount percentage of such loan and out of that how much is granted to promoters and related parties so if it is there aggregate amount what is the percentage compared to the total loans and how much of such loans is granted to promoters related parties so <sighs> now six points how i'll try to remember the first one if i have granted such loans advances etc or given security aggregate amount and the balance outstanding for the loans which are to related parties that is a subsidiary associate joint venture other than subsidiary associate joint venture second terms and condition are not prejudicial to interest of company repayment schedule is there repayments are regular overdue amount i have to report amount overdue for more than 90 days and whether reasonable steps are taken for recovery fifth one if anything has fallen due whether that loan is extended renewed or i gave a fresh loan to repay the original loan aisa kuch hai if yes to uska amount and the last one last one if there is a loan given which are repayable on demand no terms and conditions we are prescribed no terms and conditions we are prescribed then to kya kare to aisa agar loan hai to give the aggregate amount percentage and out of that how much is to promoters related parties see you need to remember first try to remember basic points kaun se aane chahiye then if you read this two three times language will be almost similar fourth one again intercorporate loans investment guarantee security so, sir why ye bhi tha loans investment guarantee security ye bhi loans investment guarantee security now this is about the approvals when you want to give intercorporate loans investment guarantee security provisions of section 185 186 of companies act 
they are to be complied so this is related to approvals when you want to give the loan so whether you need bod approval whether you need shareholders approval so this is related to approvals approval liya tha ki nahi the so section 185 186 have been complied this is related to approvals required like bod approval shareholder approval up to a limit bod can approve beyond the limit shareholders can approve so what does 185 186 say it's not in our syllabus you will learn in law yeah yahan pe just itna hai we have to report 185 186 are complied or not that's it 185 186 are complied or not and i told you did to same way we report this point was also there earlier it was there in caro 16 just check fourth point in our opinion and according to information explanation given to us company has complied with the provisions of section 185 186 in respect of grant of loans making investment providing guarantees and securities to so, same ditto as it is whatever is basically the point same way we report so in our opinion based on information explanation given to us the company has complied with the provisions of section 185 186 for the intercorporate loans investment guarantees and securities okay so this is wo tha upar amount wise i have to disclose the amounts loans given how much is to subsidiary associate joint venture other than subsidiary associate joint venture terms are not prejudicial schedule of repayment is there or not overdue amount that was this this is whether approvals were taken or not next public deposit next public deposit now pay attention Uh, just as we all make a fd with a bank we can also have a deposit with a company companies can accept public deposit so just as we all people make a fd fixed deposit with a bank we can also deposit our money with company so company can raise money from public at large by way of public deposits but uh, it will be always time deposit not demand deposit the public cannot withdraw the money whenever they want it will be a time deposit so suppose company raises money from public by way of public deposits so if company has raised money from public by way of public deposits we are required to report now see when you accept money from public as public deposit you are acting like a bank yeah you are acting like a bank you are taking money from people the so directions of rbi needs to be complied then we have section 73 to 76 of companies act which is to be complied so that is what is given in respect of deposit accepted by company or amount which are deemed to be deposits whether the directives of rbi and the provisions of section 73 to 76 have been complied if not the nature of contravention and if any specific order is passed against your company if any specific order is passed against your company by company law board or national company law tribunal or rbi or any court whether that order has been complied okay if you have taken public deposits directions of rbi Section seventy-three to seventy-six have been complied or not? If not, nature of contravention. And if any order is passed against your company by NCLT or Company Law Board, earlier there was Company Law Board, now there is NCLT or RBI or court. Whether that order is complied or not, I have to just answer this. I have to just answer this. If company has not taken deposit, we'll write company has not accepted any deposit. from public accordingly this clause is not applicable 
तो इवन इफ क्लॉज इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल राइट डाउन ओके तो चेक इन्फोसिस का ऑडिट रिपोर्ट The company has not accepted any deposits during the year and does not have any unclaimed deposit as at last day of the year. Therefore, this clause is not applicable. Next, cost records. Whether maintenance of cost record have been specified by central government under section one forty eight subsection one. So whether for your class of company, central government has specified maintaining costing record. Okay, the so certain classes of companies, certain classes of companies are required to maintain costing record. So whether CG has notified your class of company to maintain the costing record? If yes, whether such costing records are made and maintained? Okay, so I have to report whether. For our company, costing records are specified. If yes, whether such costing records are made and maintained. Okay. Now we don't have to do detailed audit of costing records. We just have to report whether they are made and maintained. I just write over here a note. We. do not have to do detailed audit of costing records we don't have to do detailed audit of costing records we just have to report whether they are made and maintained this will be based on prima facie checking i just see prima facie and i'll say whether they are made and maintained i don't have to do detailed audit of costing record that's not our work I don't have to do detailed audit of costing record. I just have to say whether they are made and maintained. I'll just see prima facie. Ah, uh, lag raha hai they are made and maintained. That's it. Based on prima facie examination. If you have space, add the word based on prima facie examination. Okay, the number one was fixed asset, inventory, intercorporate loans, investment guarantee security, intercorporate loans, investment guarantee security, public deposit, costing records. Next comes statutory dues. Okay, statutory dues, dues payable to government. What are statutory dues? Dues payable to government as per some statute. that statute to reduce so we have to report two things one whether the company is regular in depositing undisputed statutory dues including gst provident fund employee state insurance income tax sales tax service tax customs excise vat etc to appropriate authority to pehle general sentence general sentence whether the company is regular in depositing undisputed statutory dues whether the company is regular in depositing undisputed statutory dues to the appropriate authority if not okay if not the extent of arrears the amount to pehla to general sentence company is regular a company is generally regular or company is not regular first you write down that and now if not the amount of arrears as on the last day of the year so how much is not yet deposited on the last day of the year which is outstanding for a period exceeding 6 months from the date they became due for payment okay the extent of arrears as on the last day of the year 
for a period exceeding six months from the date they became payable it should be outstanding on last day of the year and for a period exceeding six months it should be outstanding on last day of the year and for a period exceeding six months okay so i just write over here as a note it should be outstanding on last day of year and for period exceeding 6 months from the date they become payable from the date they became payable okay pay attention if it is not outstanding on last day of the year no need to report if it is not outstanding on last day of year no need to report and if it is outstanding but for less than 6 months it is outstanding but for less than 6 months again no need to report you have to report the amount so pehla whether company is regular in depositing undisputed statutory dues with government authorities whether go company is regular in depositing undisputed statutory dues with government authorities and second uske sath if not if not you have to report the amount which is outstanding on last day and for a period exceeding 6 months from the date they became payable if it is not outstanding on last day i paid it on 30th march i paid it on 30th march okay more than 6 months late more than 6 months late but i paid on 30th march it's not outstanding on last day it should be outstanding on last day and for a period exceeding 6 months from the date they became payable due date se 6 months ho gaya and not paid on 31st march sir april mein pay kiya then you report if it is paid in april next year if it is paid in april next year still you report because it's outstanding on last day for a period exceeding 6 months right over here if it is paid in next year say april before audit report is issued if it is paid off in april before audit report is issued then we need to report if it is outstanding for more than 6 months if it is paid in next year we need to still report it because it's outstanding on last day of year it is outstanding on last day of the year okay fact about subsequent payment can also be mentioned fact about subsequent payment can be mentioned if i want to mention that sir it has been subsequently paid in april i can write but i need to report this amount okay so this was for undisputed undisputed statutory dues one general sentence undisputed statutory dues one general sentence whether the company is regular in depositing undisputed statutory dues with appropriate authorities if not 
I'm required to report the amount which is outstanding on last day of the year and for a period exceeding more than six months from the date they became payable. Yeah, from the date they became payable. Due date say six months are gone. Okay, now the second point, when statutory due referred to in A have not been deposited on account of dispute, so you are not deposited because of any dispute, upar tha undisputed, yaha pe dispute hai, so if there is a dispute and I have not deposited, there is a dispute, government says this, I don't agree, there is a dispute and I have not deposited. So amount involved in dispute, forum where the dispute is pending. Amount involved in dispute, forum where the dispute is pending has to be mentioned. So if you are not deposited, you have not deposited on account of dispute. You have not deposited on account of dispute. Amount involved in forum, kaha pe case chal rai? Is the case going on at commissioner appeals? Is the case going on at tribunal, high court, supreme court, where the case is going? Now pay attention, pay attention. Uh, you got a so cause notice. You got a so cause notice from the department. See, first of all, you get a so cause notice. So cause notice is, department is telling, show us a cause why you should not be liable for this amount. Show us a cause why you should not be liable for this amount. You got a so cause notice from government. You replied to so cause notice that, sir, this is the reason why I'm not liable. Like, I got a notice. I got a notice. Now, I had purchased a flat. I'm not sold a flat, purchased. I got a notice from government telling that it appears that you are sold a flat and you are liable to capital gain. Why you are not paid capital gain? I have not sold a flat. I have purchased a flat. I got a notice that it appears you have sold a flat, you are liable to capital gain. Why you are not paying capital gain? So that was a so cause notice. I replied that, sir, I have not sold the flat, I have purchased the flat, I am not liable for any capital gain. Uh, on purchase, appropriate TDS I have deducted and paid. Uh, it, when you purchase an apartment not from builder, there is a TDS applicable. So I got a show cause notice, show cause notice I reply, when you receive a show cause notice, it's not a dispute. I receive a show cause notice, I reply matter over, uh, if they are not happy with my reply, then they raise a demand notice. If they are not happy with my reply, then they raise a demand notice and once they raise a demand notice, once they raise a demand notice, then I go into appeal, then it's a dispute. The mere so cause notice received is not a dispute. Show cause notice received from department is not dispute. They send me a so cause notice, I'll reply to so cause notice, matter might be over. If they are not happy with my reply, if they are not happy with my reply, they raise a demand notice. If they are not happy with reply, they'll raise a demand notice and then I go to commissioner appeal, I appeal against the demand. Then that's a dispute. The mere representation to concerned department, I got a show cause notice, I give a reply, that's not a dispute. Uh, dispute here? and you are not deposited amount, they raised a demand, you did not pay, you went into appeal, that's, you are not deposited, the so amount and the forum where dispute is pending are to be reported. Okay, let me go to Infosys, yes, era 7th, okay, this is according to information explanation given to us in respect of statutory dues. The company has generally been regular in depositing undisputed statutory dues with the appropriate authorities. 
there are no undisputed amount payable there are no undisputed amount payable as on the last day of the year which are out basically outstanding for a period exceeding 6 months from the date they became payable actually this both are a part of a this both are a part of a now and b point the details of dues which have not been paid on account of dispute the details of dues which have not been paid on account of dispute I need to tell the amount and the forum where case is pending so this is the forum where dispute is pending and this is the amount the forum where case is pending and this is the amount uh, these two are required they were given additional so nature of dues period to which it relates nature of dues statute consai the nature of dues income tax statute is income tax act period to which it relates amount which is not deposited 1031 crores yeah, thousands crores 1031 crore not deposited case pending is again with the tribunal so where the case is pending ditto as it is reporting is to be done this was your point number seven going to point number eight transaction not recorded in books okay if any transactions were not recorded in books but during income tax raid or something you disclosed to them you surrendered or disclosed as income during the year in tax assessment so whether it has been properly recorded in your books of accounts so now you agreed to so now whether that income is now recorded in your books of accounts properly so if so so whether it has been properly recorded in your books of accounts now the previously unrecorded is now properly recorded in your books of accounts the transaction not recorded in books during income tax raid you have agreed yes sir this is my undisclosed income I have not disclosed it you surrendered or you disclosed the income so whether now it is appropriately recorded in books of accounts tenth default in repayment of loans and borrowing default in repayment of loans and borrowing the whether the company has defaulted whether the company has defaulted in repayment of loans or other borrowing if yes period and the amount of default so whether you defaulted in repayment of loans borrowings or its interest if yes period and amount and you need to give detail like this you need to give detail like this nature of borrowing what was the borrowing long-term loan bank overdraft debentures the so nature of borrowing name of lender name of lender that's lender wise detail to be given amount not paid on due date whether it's principal or interest number of days of delay and remarks if any remarks if any so whether the company has defaulted in repayment of loans or borrowings any lender it's any lender not necessary banks or financial institution it is any lender not necessary bank or financial institution any lender is the word if you default it give details whether the company is declared as willful defaulter whether the company is declared as willful defaulter by bank financial institution or other lender whether the term loan term loan ke money has been applied for the purpose for which they were obtained if not the amount so diverted and the purpose where they were used so whether term loan money is used I took a loan for buying a machine and I use it for buy a car I took a loan for buying machine I used it for buying a car it will be reported here whether funds raised on short term basis have been used for long term purpose okay bank OD used for buying a machine bank OD used for buying a machine that's fund raised on short term basis used for long term purpose example is bank OD used for 
परचेज ऑफ मशीन दैट नीड्स टू बी रिपोर्टेड विच इज नॉट करेक्ट शॉर्ट टर्म फंड शुड नॉट बी यूज फॉर लॉन्ग टर्म पर्पज बिकॉज दैट लॉन्ग टर्म पर्पज में मनी विल कम वेरी स्लोली बट दिस हैव टू रीपे वेरी फास्ट तो दिस एक्चुअली शुड नॉट बी अलाउड whether the company has taken any funds from entity person on oh sorry entity or person to meet the obligation of its subsidiary associate joint venture okay so i have taken loan or money from someone not for me i have taken loan or money from someone not for me but for the obligations of subsidiary associate joint venture if yes to uska detail whether the company has raised loan on the pledge of securities held in its subsidiary associate or joint venture okay so i took a loan i took a loan security me i gave my shares which i have in subsidiary associate joint venture so i took a loan on pledge of securities held in means on pledge of shares of the shares which i hold in subsidiary associate joint venture so we have pledged so in simple words in simple words we have pledged our holding in subsidiary associate or joint venture so whether we have taken loan by pledging whether we have taken a loan by pledging the shares which we have in subsidiary associate joint venture if yes the details thereof and whether the company has defaulted in repayment of such loans okay so this was relating to the default in repayment of loans or borrowing let me finish till 10 then i'll give you 5 minutes break i'll finish till 10 then i'll give you 5 minutes ka break okay the first whether the company has defaulted in repayment of loans or borrowings of any lender if yes period and the amount this way i need to give the detail whether the company is declared a willful defaulter by bank or financial institution whether the term loan money were applied for the purpose for which they are taken whether short term funds have been used for long term purpose uh, whether you have raised funds whether you have raised funds for meeting the obligations of okay you are raising funds not to meet your obligation whether you raise funds to meet the obligations of subsidiary associate joint venture or whether you have raised funds by pledging your holdings in subsidiary associate joint venture this were the points given 10th last one before break utilization of public issue utilization of issue proceeds and preferential allotment okay if you come out with a ipo or fpo if you come out with a ipo or fpo whether they were applied for the purpose for which they were raised if not uska details so whether money raised by ipo or fpo ipo is first time when you go to public fpo is further public offer again you go to public the money raised by ipo fpo whether they are utilized for the purpose for which they were raised same way preferential allotment okay preferential allotment is you don't go to public at large you directly issue shares or debentures to a selected group of people so this is allotment to selected people not going to public at large it's allotment to selected persons not public at large this is preferential allotment if you go for preferential allotment of shares section 42 is to be complied if you go for sec- preferential allotment of debentures 62 the section 42 and 62 have been complied or not and and the funds are used for that purpose and if not give the details of non compliances okay to so money 
uh, utilization of issue proceeds and preferential allotment whether the money raised by way of ipo or fpo are applied for the purpose for which they are raised if not uska details if you come out with a preferential allotment or private placement of shares or convertible debentures requirements of section 42 62 are complied or not and whether they are used for the purpose for which they are raised if not uska details so we are done till 10th point first one fixed asset number 2 was inventory number 3 intercorporate loans investment guarantee security number 4 intercorporate loans investment guarantee security ye approval part tha number 5 was public deposit number 6 was costing records number 7 statutory dues number 8 whether you defaulted uh, number 8 was transaction not recorded in book ninth default in repayment of loans and other borrowings and number 10 utilization of issue proceeds and preferential allotment we just take a break of 5 minutes yeah 5 minutes ka break and then we come back and finish off this caro 2020 bye take care 5 minutes